Behind all these closed doors live some of the most famous people from stage and screen for the last 40 years. Jack Nicholson, Al Pacino, Joe Pesci, Roger Moore, John Hurt, Jack Flatley, and the <laughs> Rolling Stones. Oh, me. I'm doing another scene from my film, Get Chisholm. In this scene, we've got Al Pacino. He's a smashing little actor. Behind it at the box office, eh? Now, Al, are you ready, mate? Uh, Mike, I read in Newsweek that uh, yeah. London cabbies always play the harmonica. You know, what do you think? No. Just play the scene as we were asked. Right, everyone. Uh, let's do this scene now, shall we? It was great to have the opportunity okay. to play a London cabbie. I started using words like that bloke, quid, um, rinky dinky doo, you know. I, I used to all this cockney stuff. I was 100% cockney. Action out! Oh, don't you try and stripe me up, governor. I've been down the dogs at Walthamstow all day. My plates of jelly are so tight going up and down the Appleton features. And cut. Yeah, yeah, great. Great, yeah. Oh. Well done, Al. Oh, That's nice. a good yeah, take for me. Good. Yeah, great. Your, uh, your London accent's coming on brilliantly. Thank you. I worked on it very hard. OK, right. Now, I think we'll do the bit in scene 10 where you are following Bob Chisholm. Yeah, I know. I yeah. Know. yeah, yeah. My first line is, uh, would you like a ride to my Andy McNabb governor? No. Your first line is, south of the river, this time of bleeding night, you must be joking. Uh, I can't say that, mate. Why not? Oh, it doesn't work for me. Now, look, I know it's not Ben Johnson, Al, but it's crucial to the plot, right? My, my character would not say, I can't go south of the river. Look, he can't go south of the Bleeding River, can he? Because he's going to Cricklewood. I know he's going to Cricklewood. The point is, my character would never say, I can't go south of the river after midnight. That means he's chicken shit. And that also means that all the people who see the tall actor, Al Pacino, with the beautiful brown eyes, they say he can't hack go south of the river after midnight. Bloody hell. I wish we'd got Adam Faith. That thing with Hank and Sally, you know, I mean, just... Uh, you know they say, let sleeping dogs lie. Where is Van Gogh? Sure, I went around there and I had a little word with Hank. I mean, come on, there's no point in carrying grudges. Ah, oh, the happy couple. What are you doing with my girl, pal? Hey, Jack, why don't you have something nice to smoke? And then you can watch me and Sally while we do it. And then you will be learning from a Dutch master. You're beginning to seriously piss me off. Sorry, Jack, I'm leaving here. It's Hank I love. Have fun in the fucking Benelux. Now, Jack, I know you've got an axe and you're furious and possibly deranged, but I've been on this dance floor myself, lad. What are you driving at, Jack? I'm talking about an old friend of ours, Jack. Old Father Time. Now, he hasn't got much conversation. In fact, he's only got two words. One of them's tick and the other one's talk. Now, look at me, Jack. I want you to think of me as a mirror. I'd rather think of you as what you are, Jack. What's that like? A sad asshole in a diamond Pringle. Yes. And now, before the midday news on Radio 3, here's a word about tonight's concert from the Wigmore. <laughs> another day, another dollar, Keith. Yeah. Hey, it's five to twelve. Yeah. You've got to open up the shop, mate. Yeah, well, I'm awake, you know. I'm just checking out these cats and you and yours. Oh, that's yeah. nice for you. Yeah, yeah, they're doing a great little number on Indian carpets. Oh, great. Yeah, we should get some, you know, something to put on the wall. Ah, they got this caller coming in, you know, she's really cheeky, you know? Yeah, yeah, someone should chop that mother down, yeah. Yeah, Keith, what you done with my Freddie Flintstone bath bubbles? Well, I threw it out. Oh. 55-year-old man bathing like a kid, it's stupid. Yeah, but at least I have a bath. It's disgusting if you think about it. Here, look what we got. What? A bit of fan mail. Oh, dear Mick, thank you for letting me be your fan. Oh. Right. Dear Mr. Keith Jaggards. Nice. This mm. is to inform you that your premises, known as Mick and Keith's Corner Shop, <sighs> will be put on the market forthwith. In accordance with the terms of the lease, you therefore have 48 hours to vacate the premises. Yours, Mr. C. Palmer, of Palmer Palmer Ricket and Racket Limited. Oh, no! Jack, listen to me. You see, at our age, we've got to forget about these succulent young girls with bodies like apricots. Alas, like Sally, she needs a, a snake-hipped lizard. You know, a lad who can yeah. pleasure her four or five times a night and <laughs> still go for a run in the morning with a bag of weights. Hank couldn't even make it to the bottom of the stairs, Jack. I, I told him as much as I could, you know, about my own experience with, you know, coming in and finding my wife rutting like a polecat. She had a thing about Bob Singers. 
She certainly slept with uh, all of Shawadi Wadi. Find yourself a nice lady, you know, about your age. A bit broad in the beam, one who smells of scones. Are you kidding? Someone you can watch some quality TV with and then curl up alone in your separate rooms. I'd rather die. It's crazy, really. I mean, me giving advice to a great artiste like Jack Nicholson, you know. Uh, I believe he did some stand-up in his time. Yeah, Keith, well, we've got two hours to go. We haven't even packed yet. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, Dick Whittlington never bothered packing. Oh, my God, the whole thing's gone belly up. Yeah. The whole shooting match. Yeah, shut up, will you? Look, this is all you need, you know. Jack and fags, you know. Yeah, well, if you I can't feed the 5,000, you give them one hell of a party. Horse radish, dried bananas, some suet. Oh, yeah, and I'll have a... Catering box and nest quick in case I get caught short. Now let's get out of memory motel and hit the freeway, you know? All right! <laughs> let's move it, Kevin. Hello, let's. Oyster in your own stock. That's a bit bleeding moody, isn't it? Yeah, uh, someone's bought the shop and we got to move on. You are right. Someone has bought the shop. And he is standing not a million miles away from you. Yeah. Uh, well, it's not him. So it must be you. Yes. I have bought the shop. Uh -huh. uh, you? Bought the shot here, but you don't know nothing about the grocery trade. Neither do you. What I've thought for some time is that this street needs a marina. And what does every marina need? Oh, um, um at least ten feet of water for keel clearance. Good, yeah, but no. Every marina needs a well-stocked chandler's. Ropes, cleats, things uh, like that. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. And from now on, this shop is going to be called Some Like It Yacht. Oh, nice. And for you two lads, it's sailors' outfits. Nautical clobber is de rigor. How's that sound, lads? Full steam ahead, or what? There's some beans and toast. Help fart out the paint. Oh, Jesus Christ. My head's in hell, Mrs. H. I don't want my ass there with it as well. Oh, I'm so lonely, Mrs. Huggett. I really miss her. Why don't you get yourself a pet, get a little dog? Oh, great. Yeah, I turn up at the Oscars with my shades and my Versace suit, and I got a fucking chihuahua on my arm. You have worse dogs than that in your arm. I've been abandoned, Mrs. H, and you know it scares the hell out of me. Ah, hi there, Mrs. Hugger. Welcome aboard. What's all this thing? Oh, some like it yacht. All your chandlering wishes. Yeah, in a suffering cuttlefish and sling your hook. <laughs> I knew you two was mum and dad, but I didn't know you was halfway up the Blackpool Tower with your asses or your heads. Oh, no, you see, it's our new business, isn't it? We've gone nautical. Look, Mick, I need some cat food, some fire lighters, and a medium sliced loaf. And all you got is this. I mean, I can't cook a rudder, can I? And what bloody lunatic had this idea? I mean, you know, what use is this to sell a street? Well, uh, you know, time and tide waits for no man and all that, you know. I'll have to go to Wasda in Kingston now, and it's lucky they've got Michael to drive me there. At least we've got one sensible head in this street. You're nothing but a pair of assholes. Fuck you! Oh. And your parrot is an elf. Well, see you when Fuck we're next to the shore. Oh, I better get myself down the shop and uh, get me some... Uh... Oh, it's custom. Oh, and I'll get me some force flakes. High over the fence left Sunny Jim till I fucking whacked his leaping ass. What kind of a fucking cocktail were you on when you turned that corner store into a fucking frigate? Uh, hold on, Joe. Yeah. Uh, when my plans for the marina go through, that's just the kind of shop plans. that people will be crying out for. Yeah, you'll be fucking crying out if you don't get all that fucking jetsam back in the ocean. Otherwise, they'll be washed up with the coke cans and last week's fucking fish head. All right, Joe. Cocky prick. Yes. Nice to see you, too. Here, like all good ideas, it takes time to catch on, doesn't it? I mean, look at that Charles Lindbergh. Nobody wanted his cheese for years. Harris? The bog's bleeding broken. <laughs> I am trying to learn my speech for the local amateur dramatic society's production of Merchant of Venice. What do you want to go and do that for, you bleeding great punts? Ah, I could strut and fret my eye upon the stage instead of living here with you, you dirty little rat. Trouble is with you, Harold. You've got no gratitude, have you? You don't know which side your bread's bleeding buttered on. Oh, come on, I ain't got no butter, have I, Peter? All I've got is this piece of bread and it's 
style. Like you. Look at you. You're covered in sores, you dirty little man. <laughs> ah, you've never been any good, have you, Harold? It was like when your mother was alive. I used to say to her, it'll never amount to much. Oh, hello, Jack. I couldn't stand the icy blast of loneliness, Mrs. Huggett. Oh. All those mirrors with one sad face staring back at me. Oh, well, you better come on in. I mean, you can't blab at the yeah. doorstep. You'll embarrass yourself. Yes, come on, Jack. Oh, My seconds no. this plate a try, but then I, I thought, I thought, you know, I don't want to be a pig, so... Oh, you only... You've probably never had tripe, have you? Oh, that's terrific. Yeah, terrific, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, just watching Step Toe and Son. We like it. Always makes me laugh. Ah, oh, this is the line, huh, Eileen? Sitting here with a nice plate of tripe on my knees. Watching a couple of old uh, trash guys who look like I feel. Yeah, yeah, I, I, were, I were brought up in a place like that. Not quite as smart as this, though. What are you going on about, you bleeding great puff? <laughs> Why don't you get yourself a nice bird, Harold? So you can bring her round here. What? Just so you could get your dirty little paws on her. I like big, beefy birds, Harold. Yeah. What about that barmaid down at the butcher's hook? Oh, my God! She was a nice girl. Built for comfort, wasn't she, Harold? Biggest pair of lungs I've ever seen. Why are they laughing? I mean, is this a comedy show? Uh, it's a slice of life, Jack. You're out, mate. You have caused enough fleet and trouble round here. And Jack is one of my top chinas. And you broke his poor little heart when you put your kippers under his grill. Well, look, come on, I'd live and let live. I mean, Hank's a decent bloke. No. I mean, look, I need him, darling. Oh, yeah. He's always good for a fiver or a tenner or a can of Aranja. Now, nah, look, John, I'm sorry, what? but I've re-let the room. Oh, Christ. It's bloody dramatic. That's your problem, Mike. Bye, Sally. Arsehole. Have fun in the low countries, won't you? I will. And don't forget to padlock your bike. George Shaw told me that. I better go up to his room, see if he's left any bob out there. If the old Bill come round, I could do time for all that. I think I'd better uh, uh, leave Patrick Moore to discover Uranus and uh, hit the hay to uh, naughty Blinko land, huh? Yeah, but you know, if you're feeling a bit lonely, Jack, you know, I've got some rushes in uh, for your breakfast, and you could always keep here on this nice, soft sofa. Well, thanks for the offer, Mrs. H, but if I'm going to live alone, and I am, then I'd better get used to it. I think it's time Jackie went solo. Yeah, well, you do what you think best, but, you know, I've got some of them pills they use for stunning horses. You get yourself a nice night's sleep. I could come up and check you. I take two of those pills every night, Eileen, and, you know, they don't even begin to tug the ropes down on this old marquee. Yeah. Yeah. Shit, I thought pulled then. Mike, Mike. Hello, Rog. I was just pouring myself a nice glass of shivers. Do you fancy one? Yes, I think when you finish reading this letter, you'll probably want to finish the bottle. Dear resident, this is to inform you that Stella Street Surbiton is to be demolished to make way for a six-lane highway. Quite. If we were to carry on this conversation for a few months, we could find ourselves standing on the hard shoulder. I believe you, honey. Thousands wouldn't. Darling. Oh, Jack. 